Good morning, folks. Today we've got space weather, eye candy, a climate goof with a PhD, and a double dose of catastrophism at the end. Two key processes from the ongoing disaster confirmed. But we begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star were mostly quiet. Minor corona motions as filaments get situated in jock with the active regions for breathing room in the corona. We've had no significant flares and the solar wind is dropping back to very calm range this morning, along with geomagnetism. We expect that to end over the coming days, as the northern coronal hole is not going to miss our planet with its solar wind, as well as a chance for minor stream catches from smaller openings in the next three days. Meanwhile, the active region crossing the north has decayed as you see top right, south is pretty blank and incoming up top, we find a large, lonely umbra. While it's by itself at the moment, its trailing surface magnetism wants to produce. We'll have eyes on that one today as well. Let's get some visuals here from Goddard SVS with the Active Fires animation for the year to date so far. They always give us this one in October when the pressure setup has the western U.S. under higher risk, especially the Pacific Coast. It's always good to come back in January and get the full year's video. But soon enough, winter will be here and we're on to a climate scientist who is quite confused. It's easy to tell this was meant to shill for the propaganda paradigm, but the entire work is riddled with the sort of thing you find in sentence number one. Northern autumns and winters are getting hotter. Well, no. Because while the spring snow cover is dropping over time, both fall and winter snow totals in the northern hemisphere are rising. Those are the ones the author clearly specified. But hey, nature, most people don't check data, so go ahead and publish whatever. Up next is Pluto, and of course its atmospheric collapse has been one of the stories of the decade, especially in terms of the other planets changing, showing even scarier changes than the Earth is so far. A couple of weeks ago, a team out of Iran claimed that the 2020 look at the atmosphere appeared to show no signs of it losing that 20% in just a few years. But it was a different method, and last night, Sweary came out and confirmed the drop at Pluto. This confirmation of something terrible comes with a companion paper showing how the surface chemistry is changing, only enough to account for the northern summer solstice, and not a freezing out of the atmosphere. This pushes towards the idea that it was lost another way, in a catastrophe. But before we leave the Iranian team in the dust, I want to toss something out there. Pluto's atmosphere shouldn't stay depleted for long if it was the disaster event. Turning an Earth into a Mars isn't a 12,000-year cycle event. It's a much longer process. And just like the Earth would be expected to outgas and replenish the atmosphere after a solar blast ripped away part of it, the same outgassing could provide the same replenishment process at Pluto, which might leave this team, which looked later, with the first observation of that recovery. Now, from confirming Pluto to the accretion boom scenario. Not that we need yet another way to show how the encounter triggers reactions at the stellar and even galactic level, but today we've got two papers on the coronal rain and what it can do, and it shouldn't shock any observer that it can further trigger stellar eruptions. Companion papers from this team hitting two major journals this week, breaking down what's likely the smallest scale example we know of that concept, where if you dump material down through the atmosphere of a star, it's going to react. The biggest versions of this, of course, are the galactic core flaring outburst when it eats a star, or the Type 1a supernova with binary stars. The practical example of the extra gas and dust and plasma coming with the galactic current sheet at the same time as the Sun takes the galactic magnetic reversal is what we're worried about on this planet. They're spaced 12,000 years apart, last one about 12,000 years ago. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.